We are live. What's going on, guys? It is Sunday night, 6 o'clock Chicago time. Uh, these are always random Q&As. I figured I'd get online and uh, let the boys and uh, maybe one or two women who have questions <laughs> to ask questions. In chat, we got Michael Favada. What's up, dude? Uh, how do we do this? We say Derek at BigDGuitars.com for sending uh, questions, comments, pictures. Uh, we do the uh, we go live and do like a random Q and A, and people send in pics and stuff they want to talk about. I haven't really seen anything that interesting in the guitar world lately. I'm looking through what I saved. Um, I did see this beautiful purple Corvette, uh, the other day and, uh, that was about it. <laughs> Michael just sent his current bill. We'll take a look at that. I don't think I've saved anything. Oh my God. I, so I am doing something stupid. Um, I'm looking at a wooden boat because I'm an idiot and let's see if I can find it here for you guys real quick. Here we go. There's a 1955 Chris, Ca Chris Craft Cavalier wooden boat, and it needs some restoring. And I went and took a look at it. Someone started to refinish it, and I am not an engine guy, but this thing hasn't been turned on in 15 years. And uh, I don't know. The worst part of the boat was the backside, that back left corner needs to be rebuilt the whole backside needs to be rebuilt so i would rebuild that um and go down that path so that's where i am in my head right now i wouldn't take a break from the guitars i would just add that because i'm stupid right um i posted a lot of videos some of my old videos from YouTube, online, and um, struggling to put a little bit of content together. So let's go live and fill up Content Void, right? Um, yeah, I don't really have anything new. I did pull this one out, and I've been playing with that a lot. That's been fun. Uh, it needs a fret job. It's stainless steel, and I haven't done fret work in a while. I know it's going to bother the heck out of my finger. Um Mr. Forrest Hollow, Michael here is got a build. Uh, we could talk about it here. You know, literally, my internet router is. I'm staring at it, and pictures and stuff take forever to come down. I don't get it. Really, don't get it actually. So that's a pretty nice headstock design. I like that. It's pretty cool. Is that like modeled after a gun? Like a uh, pew, pew, pew. What is it like that? Pew, pew. Uh, I actually had, in one of my videos, Michael, I did a, I, um, <laughs> staring at my screen for something cool here. Don't we all do that? Some magical moment of inspiration. Um, I do like that. It's It's unique. I like the extra mass on the headstock as well. Um, that's my personal preference. Fifties inspired. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't think I'm not going to find it, but there's a Fender keyboard from the fifties. Um, it was just outstanding. It's unbelievable. Um, I am refinishing this. What's up, Steve? Uh, I'm refinishing this Les Paul. I've got uh, the second coat on, third coat. We had a little bit of bleeding in the lacquer top. So we had to scrape that off and start over. So we did that. And then taking pictures of omelets to send to friends. Um, the Chicago River was green. We saw that with the kids. That's about it. I um, started to do that refinish so that's probably been the biggest thing is um the refinish and the spray and it's cold so it's whole it's cold it's warm what's up jay blake um 
and the weather here is really goofy. I did post this stain job on YouTube that got some decent views. And then my favorite was I reposted my short of me pulling out and I actually needed to do a video of an ex explanation of why I did it this way. Cause it seems like whenever I post this video, people think I'm an idiot. And, um, I mean, I guess some people think that's the case, but I kind of know what I'm doing. So I used scissors to pop this out. And the reason I use the scissors is because those scissor blades are like an eighth inch thick. And this wasn't coming out. And yeah, I probably could have put a board underneath that piece of mahogany, but it's a maple top and a piece of flat mahogany. And getting the scissors in all the way was able to really get the leverage. And what I wanted to do was the leverage to pick up the post and some of the tools get in underneath the post and pop it up too close. And I wasn't getting it to come up. Um, so for me, that was the right way to do it. And I wanted to have as much action and as a lever to pop it, which is why I used those scissors. So maybe I'll do a video on that. Maybe I won't. Um, yeah, I haven't saved anything. You know, of all the guitar stuff I've done lately, some of my old videos are getting a ton of views. Um, so that's where I've been really focusing on just popping content back on there um, that has some value. <laughs> so. Yeah, Mike, I'll get to that in one second. I'm just seeing if I got any other good pictures here. Uh, not really. All right. Any advice for spring sealer and clear over fretted maple fretboard? I imagine it's a lot of pain. Hey, what's up, Blackjack? I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Um, you want to get the frets in, seal the fretboard, and then spray it with lacquer, and then you're going to scrape the frets with the lacquer off. That's the way it's done. Um, some guys, when they refret the fretboard and it's got a seal on it, you it's really hard to keep that fretboard um, clean. And then when you relevel it, you got to tape it. So, you know, if you've got a board and you're doing a maple sealed, I would um, finish it and then scrape the finish off of it once it's all done. That's probably the best way of doing that. I, I think it's the safest way you get the best results. Um, and it's the cleanest. So, uh, yeah, you know, you, if you tape down, I mean, you could get the guitar neck all set, play it on the guitar, fret it, like get it uh, fret leveled, and then do the fret work and then spray it and then scrape the lacquer off. Um, but, you know, a lot of guys will finish it, get it all set up, and then tape every fret tape the sides um, and you're still going to have slippage. I mean, I still have slippage. God, that's an awful picture of me. Terrible. <laughs> um, I still get slippage. It happens. Um, and then you got to clean up the finish. So if you use the tape or you do two rounds of tape, I mean, it really is one of the reasons why I like, um, well, no, you don't tape the frets. You tape in between the frets to do the fret work. And then um, I don't use files other than the recrowning files. So once you've got the fret, you know, you relevel it. I, you know, crown it and then I get the sandpaper on my finger and I will on each side. And then I don't have any scratches and it's taped. Um and if you level it at 300 grit and then you move up or use like the fret erasers, although the fret erasers had a great life in the beginning. And now that I've worn them down slightly, they're kind of bad. Um, you can get a decent fret level off of that. So I don't know if that helps. Um, but then, you know, think about it. If you spray the frets and you got the lacquer in between the frets, you're going to have to figure out how to polish the fretboard with the lacquer and that's kind of a it's kind of a pain um i haven't seen any videos on 
companies doing that. I do have a neck. Uh, Steve, do you have this guitar? Do you have the aluminum body guitar? Um, I think I sold it to you. And then I left the um, finish on the frets. And I don't think I ever scraped them off because I just wasn't playing it all that much. It's like you got a thousand projects in your head and you just sit on them. So I don't know, Steve, if you have that, if you're still on here. Um, but that's uh, – guys will finish it or, you know, the big companies with 2K and then you got this really thick finish on there. So that's um, – that's how I would do a finish neck. It's a huge pain. So I avoid doing that at all costs sometimes. Joe Blake sending texts. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going with this. It's a cotton candy carnival pick artist quilted maple alder body. That is interesting. Look at this, guys. Yeah, you do have the drooming guitar. See, my brain is not completely dead. I do remember things. That's actually kind of interesting. Did you um, hollow this out yourself and then sand it on the inside? That's wild. Um, it's totally psychedelic. I really kind of like it. Um, the quilt is not popping all that much. You already added black to it. It's kind of just the way the quilt is. I wonder if you... Is that an oil finish on there? Yeah, totally. That is like a, uh, what is it? Um, Michael, who's the guy that did the 70s or 60s, uh, the spy who shagged me? Michael Myers, is that it? Um, that fits into that vibe. I mean, that's like a it, guitar you could see on a poster. I like that. That's really cool. Um, I'll see if anybody else sent me anything to talk to. I, oh, YouTube is sending notifications that I went live. Look at that. There's me. <laughs> um, I like that, man. That's cool. Did you ever finish this? I kind of like that. I like the beaded edge, or at least the color transition. That's a, that's a cool fact. God, we all do some cool guitars. How about this one? Did you ever get to that? The camo finish? Send me a pic of that. That's pretty cool. Groovy, baby. Yeah. What was the movie? Someone tell me what the movie was. Austin Powers. There we go. The Spy Who Shagged Me. Um, I like that. Yeah, it sold quick. Yeah, that one is... That's cool. That's a cool guitar. I need to get back into the guitars. I, know, I don't know if any of you guys joined earlier. Got 12 of you. I think I had... Um, Where's the boat? I was looking at this boat. Wait, where did it go? Looking at that as a restore. Is this live, Mark? We are we are live. So this needs to be refinished and then epoxied and then the motor's rough. And I don't know if I want to take that on. It's a decent price, and I love Chris Crafts. Um, so I tempted, tempted to finagle <laughs> to get that, but we'll see. A cedar boat. I was going to build a canoe at one point, and in fact, I cut all the wood for a canoe. I what did I do? It's probably somewhere in the garage. I'd have to look. I stripped out. What was that? Uh, I stripped out a ton of cedar into uh, strips. And then I actually have the bits somewhere in the basement as well. The tongue and groove bits to put everything together. And then I've used that West Marine epoxy. And if you put the fiberglass sheet over it and you seal it down, um, pretty um what's the term it's pretty foolproof um so i might do that we'll see what's a boomer guitar glory and beyond um usually i post this on reddit and i post this on instagram that i'm going live i've gone live on instagram on this before um but instagram i get a lot of weird jokers i got less regulars on instagram than I do here. I think people just 
you know, get on and go crazy. So uh, I won't do that anymore. Plus, my brother gets on and starts sending nonsense to me. And I actually don't want to block him because then we can't send funny stuff back and forth to each other. A guitar that is super easy to play. Oh. <laughs> Michael, oh, if I'm shooting poly over that maple fretboard, should I try to get it with one, just one or two coats of clear? Um, yeah, you'll probably need two coats. You know, if you do really thin coats, it sits a ton better. So my biggest problem when I spray is I go way too thick on pretty much every project. That is my crutch is going way too thick with spray and just making the biggest stinking mess. Um, that is a huge problem I have. Even with this uh, purple one I just refinished, I put um, way too many coats on. And, oh, my God, why do I have all these weird pictures of people I don't want to see? Some of you would know who that is. <laughs> um I put way too many coats on this in the beginning, and then I had a little bit of a run on this bottom here, a little bit of a seam, and I had to sand that out here, and um, it's kind of a mess. And then once I scraped off the um, the binding where it bled, it, it's looking pretty good now. I'm letting it dry, and then I was tempted to spray now. I don't know what the weather's like here. 51 it's going to be 70 monday and warm yeah i'll spray on monday and then next sunday it's my birthday uh it'll be 76 wow that's warm yeah you know I, I i told my mom i was looking at the boat and she said she'd disown me if i bought it and then my dad laughed and he goes well just tell mom it's a way for you to move because now you have a trailer <laughs> i was like oh it's great dad <laughs> Um, some of you know my mom is is quite ill, um, so we're we're managing through that as best we can. Um, but yeah, one of the things when I looked at the boat, I was like, I got to flip this to finish it, and I'm like, how the hell am I going to get by myself? So this is, you know, my grandfather was always like, if it's it's only worthwhile if you can do it by yourself, and my grandfather was electric. Uh, eccentric, whatever word you want to use. And I'm not sure how I would get the boat flipped over to do the final finish on the backside. So I could, I, I know I need an engine mount to get the engine up. Um, I got a buddy who's got a shop in Naperville here. I can get him to pop the engine, pull the trailer in, and then, you know, get, you know, put it in the in the back of the Subaru and then get the boat flipped upside down. But I don't even know what the weight of that boat is. I have to do some more research. Maybe the guy will come back with a deal of a lifetime. Am I looking to buy a Corvette? Yeah. I think in the future, once all this other garbage settles down, I'm in between like a 99 or 2000 vet or like a 99 2000 Porsche, uh, 911. I don't really know what one I want to do. Sort of my mom always wanted a Porsche. Um, and we've reminisced about old times, <laughs> but what she wanted, I always wanted a Corvette. So I don't know, but I got four people. So I, I know you can't really count a, uh, Porsche as a four person car, but technically you can, <laughs> technically you can. And a Corvette, you can't. So, I don't know, we'll see. If I ever get to that point in my life, um, build a Slavic pit home, then use upside bonus roof, the rabbit people. <laughs> I think I'll have to see how people flip boats. I saw a jig to do it years ago. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, if I put a post on pop the windshield off, pop a board off the top, and then use the ports in the backside to turn it. I'll have to figure that out. 
And my son is calling me because he wants me to deliver pound cake and I can't. <laughs> my mom made him pound cake and he's freaking out. He might be actually watching this now. So if the comments go rogue, we'll kick him off. <laughs> oh, dad, 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 dad. It's always fun. All right. What else we got here? 20 minutes, some guitar stuff. Still hitting the gym. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm also eating too much. That's my biggest problem is I actually like to eat. Um, I did get down. See, I was like 250 something last year. And then uh, I'm probably about 240. And when I was doing the marathon, in October, my lightest was 225, and I got to get down to 220. So we'll get there again. It's happening. Just got to learn how to diet better. We'll see. Oh, we got five of you. The last five. It's not a popular time. I thought this would be a good time. Usually I do Tuesday nights. Um, and uh, Tuesday nights were kind of my night. Um I'm not no, no so sure Sunday nights was the good you two end of the world. Hey, what's up from Brazil? Uh, James Tyler pulls off those schmear sh finishes. I think I know what you're talking about. Let me look that up. James Tyler. Schmear. Let's see. All right, so we're looking up schmear finishes from James Tyler. I'm doing some research here. Um, they look like they're like a pour. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, it looks like it's some sort of pour or sand, like a, a paint with a material. These look, the headstock looks similar to, who was just down here? Michael. Um, that's weird. Is that where you got the, stop calling. The magnetic shift happens after the eclipse. Fernando, what's up, Fernando? Um, oh, Michael, you did. So that's where, um, talk about the Les Paul log. What about the Les Paul log? What are you talking about? I'm confused. Uh, James Schmier, where, why did the thing disappear? That looks like a, like a dip or a swirl or something along those lines. These James Schmier finishes. Oh, can't I share my screen? Hold on. I have to use my special password to let you guys in here. Hold on. Oh, I have to quit and restart to share my screen. Sorry, guys. I can't do that. Um, here, I'll, I'll show the, these this finish. So this looks like it's paint with some material in there, and that's my son. Um, it, it looks like it's like a drip or a like a like a heavy swirl paint. That's an interesting. I've never seen these. 
But yeah, you could see the ridge on the edge of that. Look how um, how much material is in, in that. So it kind of it looks like a swirl, like I, but it's not. I mean, obviously, it's not a swirl, but it's got. Um, So this one totally looks like a swirl, like a swirl going wrong with like a, uh, what do they call those, a pour? It's like a paint pour where you pop this off. It's like some weird combination of that. I mean, this one is just sort of sanded off. That's a regular finish that he sands off intermittently. Um, and so this one really, I'll call this the Matrix guitar. It looks like he paints the guitar does a dump, picks up the guitar, hangs it, and lets it drip off, and he wipes off the excess paint. That it's kind of what I'm thinking it is it, he does. Yeah, that's totally it. Here, look at this one. I mean, that is that's total paint pour that levels. He puts probably like a 2K finish on it to get it level. So That's it. That's, that's all we got. Nobody else is sending anything. We went back up to 12. <laughs> I do like the finishes. It's turbulence theory. What does that mean? There's Nolan. Nolan, please don't get on here and start talking about pound cake. We're going to have a problem. Derek, was that Les Paul full build or just a finish? That was just a refinish. So I sanded it down. It was a seafoam green. I don't know if I have a picture of it in the beginning. It's a terrible, terrible color. It really did not show the figure of it at all. Uh, when did I start working on it? Here. So you can see the original color of this Les Paul. It was awful. You couldn't see any of the finish. It was just not good at all. And um, and I sanded it off, you know, pretty much with the basic sander. So that ended up turning out really nice. The color is really good. It really does look pretty good, uh, even with me starting to sand it off. So we'll uh, we'll get there. All right, we're gonna do the boat as a house, do the boat as a trailer. <laughs> Talk about the Les Paul log guitar. That's what the, uh, um, what did he use? Like a piece of railroad tie or something, I think. Yeah, the pickup on the log. And I think he glued, he uh, bolted on or hammered on wings. If I recall, I haven't looked at that guitar in a while. It's dipped in and out straight. Yeah, that was my thing too. So, a luth here in my city built me an Explorer in the same measurements as a Gibson 76. It was beautiful. I asked him about the influence of the wood on the tone. He said it doesn't. It does. It's just not anywhere um, near as what you would think. It's really more about um, the playability, sustain, the feel. So, there is a feel of the wood against the guitar. You know, so you're going to... What's players number one, pickups number two, because you can get like an amazing player that'll just, you know, a Squire Strat will sound awesome. Pickups, uh, electronics, strings, finish, and then maybe wood. I could probably do a video on this. Wood is a factor, but is it negligible yes and no i the the big thing a lot of guys I, i'm assuming you'll agree with me on this is a dead wood guitar one that's not resonant is going to sound terrible versus a good piece of wood um that's a real big deal um 
Yeah, but the the thing with that cardboard strat, um, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Fernando, the, the thing with that cardboard strat, as I know that, and I know uh, Burl's Art has built some guitars, um, those guitars will not last. So, like a cardboard strat, yes, it sounds like a strat until it completely falls apart and it doesn't sound like anything. Um, yeah, oak is a dead wood, but I use, I use, you know, one thing I've done to make those oak guitars sound awesome, Blackjack, is um i hollow out the guitars which light light lightens it up and livens it up a lot and then i noticed white oak for the neck actually works out pretty well um and it sustains forever the guitar is a little bit too heavy um but it's you know it's unique all american hardwood guitar made out of whiskey barrels so that's my thing right Oh, uh, Nolan, how many messages are you going to send? Too many. Um, yeah, oak, if you, you know, you would never see a, a full solid body oak guitar. I think, uh, what is uh, Brian May's guitar? The Red Red Rider, Red Special guitar? That was all oak. Or I think it was hollowed out with a Masonite top. Or something along those lines. I can't remember. I, that one uh, was in. I don't have that book here. Um, what's the book we all had? Um, How to build your own electric guitar. That's the one. The whiskey guitars are exception. <laughs> you have to kiss my butt. <laughs> All right, so we're 31 minutes. We've had some decent guitar talk today. Not too bad for a random 6.30, 6 o'clock going live. Um, I really will put some more effort into going live. I'll get some more pictures. I'll save up some images that we can talk through. Um, we'll have more fun next time I go live. I will look for more stuff. Um, but we'll do, let's say, five more minutes. You guys got any... Um, um ever find the honey no i never actually fought the found the honey the purple honey um i was trading emails or texts was it emails or text we were texting um we were texting back and forth on purple honey you guys will like this this is cool this is actually a really cool um concept for a burst so in north carolina they have purple honey and um we were talking about doing this as a burst and actually the previous message he had mocked it up like this i thought this would look really cool as a um butterfly burst where I've done the butterfly with the lighter in the middle. I'm probably going to do that. Um, but that's interesting. I, I, You'd have to find the right piece of wood. Oh, my God. Please stop texting on. Um, I want that honey. I just want to taste it now. Now I, I am going to go back and look. I think you sent me um, somewhere to get it. But that, that's an interesting idea for a burst. I, I do like the butterfly burst. I think that was my one unique finish that i found um is with the you know coming out uh who gave me that idea um gary gave me that idea on um the les paul dc i built for him we talked about doing a different type of finish in blue and that just came out so no that honey's not dyed it's naturally purple from one of the flowers in the region, um, it's not dyed, it, it's natural that way. So I'm curious to see how you'd mix the colors. Yeah, Fernando, guitar wood matters. A bad guitar that sounds and plays horrible probably is just bad dead wood. You know, and if you go through the lumberyard and pick your own wood, usually you'll you're not gonna get crappy wood. You know, a lot of times when they're mass producing these guitars, you don't have a guy picking each piece. So whenever you get a builder to pick out a piece of wood, he's not going to pick out a dead piece of wood. So like 
this is the big thing is like, oh, what does it matter? Except, well, you're not picking that real heavy, dense piece of Purple Heart. <laughs> and you're not making a guitar out of Purple Heart uh, guitar body because it's really dense and heavy. But you'd put a tap on because it's hard. So it's from a small area in North Carolina. Yep. Uh, Kudzu, they say. What's up, Kevin? We're going to do, I guess we got some more of you here. Um, 15, I guess we'll do another five minutes. Nolan, you're still pecking away here at your pound cake. Sorry, buddy. Jesse Howard, you're just sending me a message. I, You're doing your, uh, whatchamacallit, your, uh, your thing. Um, what's this? Oh, it's from my friend. Um, hold on. Jesse's lighting up. Um, do you still have the Firebird? Which Firebird? Which Firebird are you guys asking about? Which one? The blue one? The blue Firebird was sold to, I can't remember his name now, um, a producer for a bunch of people. Or was it the Explorer? I still have, I have the Explorer here. It's in, sitting right here. Um, hold on. Let me grab it. Oh my God, dead air. I left, came back. This Explorer, is this what you're talking about? Yeah, this is mine. I mean, the whole reason I started building the guitars was for me. Is the neck angled back? Yes, it is. That's, I think, two and a half degrees. And then we shaved right here, and then it's hollowed because it's awesome. I don't know if you can see through this one. Yeah, I can see you guys. So can you see me? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but this is a mango, uh, mango palm wood guitar, and don't ever use mango. Um, don't ever use uh, no use mango. Do not use palm wood. Um, no, the multi laminate, um, the Chris Craft Firebird is gone. Uh, the guy who had it, Manila the gr grill, Granilla, Vanilla the Granilla, Vanilla the Gorilla, uh, had it. And um, last I heard, he sold it to somebody else. Um, I got this mango from Hawaii. I found a really weird piece of shaped uh, mango, and the guy I've been I was sitting at it for years. This guitar wood is probably 15 years old. You know, I bought a piece, sat on it, sat on it, and then I don't know if Doug bought a Explorer, and then I found the mango wood. I don't know. Yep, that's it. So on this fretboard, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, so here, right there, it chipped out. Because what happens is it's actually a, a grass, and the grass grows like this. The grain is just like grass. Um, did... Does Kimball ever get mango? No, he doesn't. He doesn't pick that stuff up. I don't think he gets koa. I'm sure we could ask him. But then this is actually, oh, yeah, see? See how this is bent over slightly? <laughs> uh, maturity of an idiot. So I progressively lowered these, and I pulled the top down. And the back side is flat, should be. Let's see, is it still flat? And it's like a, uh, just unique. It's one of those features. 
I'm sure we Kimball could get some nice mango. Uh, where's the other run out piece? I'm critiquing my own work. The, the bridge could have been moved. Six, no, like a 64th this way. <laughs> this chipped out. You could see some of the chip out on the top here, too. Where's the camera? Uh, you're not going to see it. But I had to, um, in a bunch of these spots, I used some epoxy and um, I cleaned up some of the spots. So, Mango the Tango. Wango Tango. I can't see the comments. I'm getting old, guys. All right. Where are you located? Do you enjoy making the cloth top guitars? The cloth top guitars are cool. That was like one of my things. I had a different way of doing the finish, and then I wrapped the binding around it. Um, I'm in... Naperville, Illinois, the greatest place for people to live. I hate it here. I, I almost swore. <laughs> I hate it here. I hate it here so much. I hate it here so much. I hate Naperville. I'm from the city. I grew up, born, raised in Chicago, and then my ex's family is out here, and I'm here. This thing sounds awesome. I mean, it's hollowed out, and it just like it, it. This is one that needs to be fretted or refretted, uh, fret leveled. Nolan, do you hate Naperville too? It's got a ton of sustain. The stainless steel frets are great, but I do got to level it. See. So even my guitars, sometimes I just build them and then I like it. This um, fretboard is palm wood. Look at that. This camera sucks. Well, you can see some of the chip out on the top of the headstock. See that chip out? I cut a piece of veneer to put that on here and it just, this wood is really difficult. But the guitar is awesome. It sounds... I mean, guitar is some great sustain. Look at that. And then you got to have a volute on every guitar neck. It just adds a ton of strength, and it's back far enough. It's not going to interfere. See? My hand is not going to interfere because the volute is right there. So... We got everybody coming on. I thought we'd be quit. I have a pick. Look at this. Should I serenade you guys? I gave my... What's the animal house? I think the Explorer really lends itself to this. You see, you can see through on that one, see through on these. So, how much is this way? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty balanced. Here, I have a dead shoulder. I can tell you exactly how much it weighs. It's less than 10 because we were just doing shoulder raises. And this is lighter than that. So maybe it's like nine, eight and a half. If I play some Led Zeppelin while I get in trouble, my video get banned. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, we are 45 minutes, and I am not Justin Johnson. So me playing live for you guys will just cause more people to drop. So Nolan, I am your father. Do not call me Derek. All right, 45 minutes. Thank you for joining us. Now I will be back to getting too many texts about pound cake. Guys, um, we'll talk. Uh, ba, ba, ba. We'll do next Tuesday, I think. Birthday Sunday. Yeah, we'll probably go. Maybe we'll do next Tuesday. So, all right. See you guys. Have a great night. Thanks for joining me. I know it's uh, random Q and A, so I will prepare better for the next time. <laughs> See you, dudes.